Hello, today we're going to read chapter 9, Fighting Wolves. Isolate means to separate from others. Isolationists believe a nation should stay out of world affairs. Some of the World War II isolationists were the same people who prevented the United States from joining the League of Nations after the Great War. You're probably wondering how three nations, Germany, Italy, and Japan, could be a threat to the whole world. Have you ever thought about how a wolf terrorizes a flock of sheep? A lone wolf doesn't attack a big flock. He picks them off one by one. Give them enough time and he'll kill them all. Germany, Italy, and Japan were wolves. They were powerful. They thought they could devour the world's nations one by one. They believed most other countries, especially democracies, were weaklings. They had good reason to believe that. In a democracy, everyone's ideas are heard. Sometimes democracies have a hard time acting quickly because so many individuals and groups are debating each other. In 1930, there were strong isolationist voices in America. They said that the oceans, the Pacific, and the Atlantic protected us from danger. They said we didn't need to pay attention to what was going on in the rest of the world. Some of the isolationists were selfish. They didn't even want to help victims of war. Others who were pacifists didn't think it right to fight in any war. They believed that if we behave peacefully, others might do the same. Still, others in the military were attached to old ways of thinking. They thought that battleships could protect us. Our battleships were huge. Some were 800 feet long. Imagine three football fields. A football field is 300 feet long. So chop off a little bit. Float that picture and add a crew of about 2,800 men in guns that fire shells 20 miles or more which was farther than any other weapon of the time. Battleships were much feared. A few voices disagreed. They said that air power had changed all the rules of war. The oceans were no longer enough protection. Colonel Billy Mitchell of the United States Army said, we needed to build up our air force. He said we needed to build aircraft carriers for our Navy. An aircraft carrier is a floating airfield that carries its own airplanes. It's really big, a bit longer than a battleship, and much wider. Mitchell pestered everyone, congressmen, army officers, naval officers, newspaper men. They got annoyed. Only a few people thought air power was important. Because he criticized his superiors in public, Mitchell was finally court-martialed and thrown out of the army. Some people said his ideas were laughable. The official program of the Army-Navy football game in November 1941 showed a picture of the battleship Arizona with the caption, Despite the claims of air enthusiasts, no battleship has yet been sunk by bombs. This was meant to be a slap at Billy Mitchell and those who agreed with him. The United States had become weak militarily. We listened to the isolationists. It was partly for a good reason. We hated war. In 1941, our military force ranked 19th in the world, smaller than that of Belgium. At the same time, the armies and navies of Germany, Italy, and Japan had become strong. Once its economy had recovered from the terrible effects of the Great War, Germany ignored the Versailles Treaty. It built a powerful army and air force. It turned out hundreds of submarines. Japan's naval fleet was awesome. Only a few people seemed concerned. War could have been prevented, said a British statement by the name of Winston Churchill. The malice of the wicked was reinforced by the weakness of the virtuous. President Roosevelt had to fight both the Depression, and Congress to build the nation's military. When the country finally turned to war production, the results were astounding. Here we have the map above showing the growth 
Roosevelt understood that totalitarian powers were dangerous. He knew they hoped to rule the world. He took them seriously. The president wanted to build up our armed forces. It wasn't easy to fight the isolationist in Congress. He began by sending war supplies to England. That got our factories going, but we were still behind most other nations and way behind Germany, Italy, and Japan, who were making plans to divide the world among themselves and were known collectively as the Axis. Militarily, we were weaklings. However, we had an advantage that the Axis powers didn't consider. It was the very thing that gave us a disadvantage. We were a democracy, a nation of free people. When free people set their minds to something, they become a powerful force. It took some time, but we became, an as we became astonishingly strong. Whether we wanted it or not, war was coming. We would win this war in our science laboratories, in factories, as well as on the battlefields. The American people had been through a testing period that toughened them for a fight. The testing period was the Depression. We were used to tightening our belts and working hard. All of that and more was going to be necessary to win this war. It would be the most awful war in all of history.